So we have uh, Mr. Harunul Rashid with us now, the program coordinator for disaster risk reduction in Cox uh, Bazaar Camp Settlements, IFRC Bangladesh, Red Crescent Society, disaster preparedness in camp settlements and host communities in Cox Bazaar, Bangladesh. Good morning. Seriously? That was loud? Good morning. Good morning. Do I need the mic? Yes. <laughs> Fine, I'll take the mic. Hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, my name is Colin, Colin Fernandez. I work for the American Red Cross. Uh, for the next 15 minutes, and the clock is ticking down right in front of me. That's traumatizing. <laughs> OK, so for the, next, for the next 15 minutes, we're going to be talking about one of the themes and the main theme of this conference, inclusion. And we'll be talking about inclusion of the Rohingya refugees in the camps of Cox Bazar. And from Bangladesh, we got the Bangladesh Red Crescent Society and the government of Bangladesh sharing the experiences, as well as we have got voices from the, from the Rohingya refugees through video. So without much further ado, I would like to introduce and bring up Mr. Huck, the director of the CPP. Good morning, everybody. This is Ahmadul Huck representing Cyclone Preparedness Program, CPP from Bangladesh. You know, uh, the, uh, this program is dealing with uh, early warning dissemination uh, in our uh, coastal region. And we are uh, uh, disseminating our early warning messages uh, to 200, around 20 million people. As uh, we are well experienced uh, for, uh, since the last 47 years, you know there is a big influx in our country that is uh, from uh, Myanmar Rohingya people. Around 1.1 million Rohingyas are now living in our country. Uh, the first concern of our country was to uh, make uh, food, shelter, and other uh, issues. Then after uh, some time, we, our government and other stakeholders and even organizations are very worried about the disaster risk reduction of these million people. And this area was uh, uh, very near to our bay and was in risk of cyclonic storms. So uh, under the request of UN organizations, uh, our government um, Interfere, intervene in this area. We uh, actually expanded our national disaster risk reduction activities toward the re refugee camps. And Bangladesh Red Kiss and so Society BDRCS is supported the full uh, operations there. The, our main concern was to uh, be, include the people who were totally excluded in their home country also. And again, they are displaced. So our, our concern was to make the excluded people to bring in our national inclusion process and make them aware about the uh, hazard, has, uh, natural hazards and other things and how to respond in uh, natural calamities. And this is our theme was to make the last meter communication. Our, uh, I, 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 before the slogan was to last mile communication, we make it last meter, face-to-face -face communication with the most excluded persons with our early message uh, awareness and response mechanism and make them totally ready to face uh, the disasters uh, to come. And they have already uh, successfully faced three months of seasons. And we are lucky enough uh, we lost not a single person in disasters there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Cool. Thank you, Mr. Huck. Uh, we would have, we got a video from Cox Bazaar where we have the female volunteers talking about their engagement, their role in disaster risk reduction and how they're helping the, the community, both the displaced community as well as the host community in terms of disaster risk reduction. So. Can we have the video, please? And I just hope there's no technical glitches. I 
I'm the camp for Sivir volunteer. Pele ara mosiyo to shom monte go tu bari ara mani team leader ko lo mano kan shom mosiyo to yeng ho jine ara mobile giri ho ara tar tar bari jai jara bollo for mani shor mai wan jati jin ase inor ara ho ideo ma boi na tu ara shotur go jogo mani indika ko da bivota bota ibar indika ko system hoye tu ara jinis patra dami jinis te mista gile inor guza sai mano kan ajin ozak deen ma jama. मोती जिनिस तागिले माने गुसा गासा राखो एन होयारै तार राखोदि गो द्वार दरगोर मुजुद गोरि बादी राखो गुंडी जरले साइन नंबर फोटो का तुली बो दे का माइंसर हो युंदो हों दिल्ला तुम्हारा गोर गोर द्वार मौजूद गोरी सत्ता गोरी बादो अब दासे बुरा बुरी थागी ले बुरा बुरी ही नर दासे निराहोता जहाँ मदे लोज आरा लोज लोज आयुं दासे डेली बारी थागी ले बुरा बाईस चावी शाता थागी ले ही नर आरा � गुन्ने जोर ओले आरा तुम्हारा ने शायद जो फहार गोरी बोलना शायद जो मदद तू फहार गोरी बोलना आरा फोस्ते ताजी ते आरा हम बोलो को बताए दे रा हास गोरी खावान जाना खावान दस नंबर सिंगल शोर है मोहन बिहार छोंगे I've never been to a, a session where there hasn't been a technical glitch. There has to be something happening. So if it doesn't happen, there's a sense of imperfection. So I think that was totally perfect. Right. Uh, <laughs> great. Uh, let, let's get back and let me introduce you to Mr. Haroon. Uh, Mr. Haroon, uh, if you look back, there's actually a portrait of him at the back. So he's really a, a star. He's been involved in the Cyclone Preparedness Program when it got initiated in 1972. And he's been working with the Cyclone Preparedness Program, the government, as well as different actors in terms of rolling out and driving the whole DRR Preparedness Program in Kork Bazaar. So I'll hand it over to Mr. Haroon. Thank you, Collins. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Haroon, you know, working for a very long period in RCRC, you know, intervention in different places. Now I'm working under Bangladesh Bird Christian Society. Uh, you have seen the introduction has been given the, about the cyclone preparedness program, which is one of the most disastrous situation, the cyclone cost in Bangladesh. When this influx, this one million people were in Cox's Bazaar, the concern was there that if there is a big cyclone, what will happen? These people will be in really in danger. Then the government decided, the Bangladesh Petrician Society decided to replicate cyclone preparedness program into the camp settlements. So I was uh, coordinating these activities into the camp because, as you know, that I was involved in cyclone preparedness program for a very long, long period. There was a lot of challenges. The first challenge was that, the language barrier. Uh, we had to overcome that one. We had to find out uh, potential you know, people in the locality who can speak Rohingya language. And then we have provided uh, TOT, training of trainers. And then we selected potential people from the Rohingya population. And it was... Uh, 50-50, 50% male and female ratio. The target was 100 people from each camp. There are 34 camps. So up till now, we have achieved 50%. So around 50%, 50 volunteers per camp has been selected and trained. There are special training, cyclone preparedness program training which is very much related with the meteorological warning system. So that we have done. And these people have been given, as you have seen in the video, 
the early warning equipment, including their personal protection gears. This has been given, and we have tested this in uh, even one was in the last month. There was a cyclone, and we have seen that it is working properly. And this, uh, the benefit is this, that the Rohingya population, they rely on this because they are people. Their own people is doing this warning. So they rely on this and they respond for that. Of course, there are a lot of you know, certain problems associated. I mean, the evacuation or shelter, still there are problems. But still then, this uh, system is working very, very well. And we are not only giving the cyclone warning, but it is associated with a multi-hazard you know, kind of a thing. There are lightning, there are heavy rain, uh, monsoon is coming, uh, landslide because the, uh, the land where they are living is not a plain, it's a hilly area. So all these things are there. So we have provided other uh, kind of things and the fire is also very uh, important you know, in, the, in the camp uh, settlements. If there is a fire, it can burn lot, lot many houses. So fire training was also provided, but that training was provided by the fire service and civil defense. Anyway, it's a combined collective efforts. And uh, to me, I, I am satisfied, you know, because we have to go for a, lo a long way to go still, because another 50% volunteer, we need to recruit, we need to train, we need to provide early one equipment and everything is being done under the supervision of the Bangladesh Red Christian Society as well as you know the government so uh, thank you very much I think I, I have just uh, uh, given a glimpses of our view of the camp settlement so if you have any question I'm, I'm happy to answer for that any questions? yes we have we have around three and a half minutes left. Yeah. Uh, we could be, we, we are happy to take a few questions from the floor. Uh, if any, anybody has, would, or reflections, if you've been engaged with the Cox Bazaar initiative out there through any other organization. Yes. Yes, thank you very much and thank you for the presentation. I have one question I know, and I'm working for the Swiss Humanitarian Aid. We're financing UNDP who is doing a big disaster risk reduction program in Cox's Bazar and in the camp areas. How do you work together? How do you collaborate with the Bangladesh Red Crescent? Very good questions. Uh, we are not working alone. It is Bangladesh Red Crescent Society, Bangladesh government, and all other partners, you know, the UNDP, uh, there is ECHO, there is IOM, UNHCR. So everybody is collectively, so, Collectively, we are implementing this uh, uh, initiative. Okay. Any more? Any more questions? I think it's, it's, it's about leaving no one behind. And given the scale of the Cox Bazaar, the issue, and everybody needs to be on board. I mean, the, the scale of it is so massive. Like uh, getting all partners on board, whether it's local NGOs, INGOs, civil, other civil society groups. We got the BBC Media Action. We have Translated Without Borders. So everybody's on board to work on this as a collective way. It's it's a coalition of organisations addressing one issue, and I think that's one of the highlights of this the Cox Bazaar issue. Yeah. How many seconds left? One minute. <laughs> okay. So fine. Uh, I'll wrap up in one minute. Uh, thank you all for listening in. Thank you okay. all for coming in. I'll yeah. hand it over back to the organizers. Thank you very much.